Welcome back. Let's take a look at equilibrium constants. So this was the result of a derivation we did in the last video, namely that the free energy of reaction is equal to stoichiometry coefficients times chemical potentials of products minus stoichiometry coefficients times chemical potentials of reactants. And now let's, let's expand these chemical potentials to something we can work with. So we know that at low enough partial pressures, we can expect ideal gas-like behavior if this is a gas phase reaction. So for the chemical potentials, I can insert the chemical potential in the standard state, so that might be at one atmosphere of pressure, for instance, plus RT log the actual pressure divided by the standard state pressure. And so if I think about having these inserted for each of these, one thing I could do is say, hmm, what if I work at the standard state pressure, right? So that all of the species have their partial pressures equal to one atmosphere, if that's the standard state. So then I'd get log one over one, it would all go away. I can define then a standard state free energy of reaction as stoichiometry coefficients times standard state chemical potentials of products minus reactants, all right? For unmixed products, each at T and one bar, why does it say unmixed? Well, I, if, I, if they're all, so I said one bar, I guess I've been saying atmosphere up to now, let's use bar, it's a better SI unit. If I mix four gases, all of which have partial pressures of one bar, then the total pressure becomes four bar. So. Now they have different chemical potentials, they're at different pressures. But still, it's, it's no problem to define this quantity, the standard state free energy of reaction, by this expression. So what about the free energy change for actual partial pressures, not for this kind of unmixed thing? So in that case, here's, here's my general expression, here's my uh, expression for chemical potential, I'm going to substitute every one of these chemical potentials with the appropriate term here. And so I, I keep my stoichiometry coefficient, there's an RT, I, I keep all the standard state ones up front, right? So each one brought in its own standard state, Y, Z, A, B. And then each one brings in an RT log, whatever its pressure is, so they all have an RT, I'll pull it out. Here are the stoichiometry coefficients. Here are all the logs of all the various pressures. And all those logs, um, let's collect things in a better way. I got sums and differences of logs. That's like a log of a product or a quotient. And I've also got things multiplying logs. So that's like taking whatever the argument is to a power. So I'm going to collect everything up. I'm going to say log of capital Q is equal to log of, here's the products and quotients business. So this is just a property of logarithms, but it's a much simpler way to write it. And also notice that included in this expression is the P's, P superscript zero, the standard state pressure of one bar. And often when you see people write this reaction quotient is what it's called, they don't include the standard state piece. Why? Because it's equal to one. Right? So whatever the pressure is divided by one is just whatever the pressure is. The reason it, it's really there though is you need to cancel the units. So you can't evaluate the log of something with units. That's kind of odd. So by dividing by the standard state pressure, you're getting rid of units. So it's just worth keeping in mind from a, a, a unit conversion standpoint. So this Q, all the stuff that's in the argument here is called the reaction quotient. And when I now simplify things still further, so I already defined what this is, the stoichiometries times the standard state chemical potentials, that's the standard state free energy of reaction. So for a given reaction, not at standard state pressure of unmixed things, it's equal to something I presumably have tabulated plus RT log Q, where now it's inside Q that all the details of actual pressures are to be found. And so let's talk about the equilibrium constant next. 
So we've got this expression that we just derived. And now let's consider the case that at equilibrium, the Gibbs reaction energy is going to be at a minimum with respect to any displacement. Right? So that means that the change in the free energy with respect to the extent of reaction, which is to say shifting left or right, would raise the free energy. You're at the bottom of a well if you're at equilibrium. And so that derivative at the bottom of the well is zero. So given that delta r of g under the conditions is equal to zero, I can rearrange this expression. I get that the standard state free energy of reaction is equal to minus rt log the reaction quotient when measured at equilibrium. Right? I've let the system come to equilibrium. I know it's at equilibrium. That allows me to know that any further free energy of reaction has a free energy change of zero. And so now I can look at what those pressures are. So I'll, I'll just expand it out again, and I'll do what I told you I do, some people do, which is I've gotten rid of those p0s. Right? They're in there to eliminate one bar unit, but here are the pressures of the various species raised to their appropriate stoichiometric powers. And we call that the equilibrium constant, right? It's what's, what is the value of this quantity after the system has been allowed to come to equilibrium. So the standard state free energy of reaction is minus RT log the equilibrium constant. This one is in pressure units. I've been working in pressure units. I'm just emphasizing that it is using a one bar standard state, for instance, uh, by putting that P subscript. So all pressure, partial pressures at equilibrium values in standard state units. All right, so let's actually put that into practice, and here's an opportunity for you to do that. So here are two reactions, but they're the same reaction. So they're both sulfur dioxide reacting with oxygen to make sulfur trioxide. And the question is, what's Kp for each, and how do they compare uh, one to the other? All right, and why is that important? <clears throat> so here are the uh, expressions then for Kp, given the two different ways, both balanced, to write this equation. And what's important to note is they're different, right? And if you actually applied numbers to them, they would be different. And so it's quite critical when one looks at an equilibrium constant that one knows unambiguously what is the balanced chemical reaction that is being used to define that equilibrium constant. All right, well, so let's, uh, let's consider other units. So given the ideal gas relationship that says that P is equal to concentration RT, so PV equals RT, but I'm going to divide both sides by V, and if I'm working in molar units, I'll get a concentration. So 1 over V is a concentration. Um, now you can convert the equilibrium constant. And so I'll actually just do that. So here's the pressure equilibrium constant, and every time I see a P, I'm going to insert a CRT. Okay. And then I'm also going to remember that a C is like a number divided by a volume. And so out will come a whole bunch of uh, concentrations, and I get RTs that appeared in all these terms raised to all these different powers. So here are the sum and differences of those different powers. And that standard state pressure that was hidden in there, so that comes out as well. And now if I multiply and divide each C by a standard state, concentration, one molar for example, then I can have a expression relating Kp and Kc where the standard state concentration has gone into this thing that also contained the standard state pressure. And the reason is that again I want this to be unitless. I, these carry units, molar to the whatever power. When I divide by everything by one molar as many times as I need to, and that's what these powers dictate, then I'll also get a unitless Kc. And so just to uh, you know, express that a little bit better, 
Kc is equal to then the concentrations. So these would be measurable quantities. You could let a reaction come to equilibrium, measure the concentrations of species, divided by C0 to get out the, uh, the units, and that defines that equilibrium constant. And then finally, we can work with activities instead of concentrations. And it's not remarkably different. Uh, here is our free energy of reaction. Remember, here is how we define the chemical potential, and it involves the activity. And so by uh, complete analogy to the concentration equilibrium constant, we get the free energy of reaction as the standard state free energy of reaction plus RT log all of the activities to their respective powers dictated by stoichiometry. And that's often called the thermodynamic equilibrium constant. And uh, for solutes in solution, of course, the, the ideality can, can be very non-ideal compared to gases, which are very dilute and tend to behave in a more ideal fashion. And so this is, again, an expression relating the standard state free energy of reaction to the equilibrium constant. And so we've seen this equation in three different forms, essentially, with uh, pressure equilibrium constants, concentration, activities. The nature of which form it is is really rolled up into that little superscript zero. And you know, it's just used to, a, to tell one, I, would, I suppose I would say, be careful with the standard state. It's not that there's a different symbol for each kind of standard state. We don't have enough symbols, it turns out. Instead, you just need to be careful. You know, put it up front, think about it, and then you'll work in the appropriate standard state. Okay, those are the equilibrium constants. Let us go on to use them in an example, and I think that will really help to cement the ideas. And apparently it's going to be a noxious equilibrium example. <laughs>